Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Michael McGinnis, and my principal task uh, for this particular moment uh, is to uh, introduce the president uh, of the Institute of Medicine, uh, Harvey Feinberg, uh, who uh, heard about this gathering and wanted to make sure that he uh, was able to be here. He set aside a, uh, a, a carved out, I should say, a, a, a few minutes of a schedule that was already triple booked. Uh, so we're especially grateful to Harvey for coming by. Uh, Harvey's been the president of the Institute of Medicine uh, for 12 years now. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm having difficulty saying that he's in his last couple of months uh, because he's been a spectacular president. Uh, and Harvey, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Uh, first, Michael, I want to thank you and uh, Claudia, all the staff who helped uh, to organize this, and especially Eric, uh, your leadership in getting this organized. Uh, Joe, it's always a pleasure to see you, and especially in this particular venue. As you so well know, the discussions and backdrop of uh, understanding about what it means to have a learning healthcare system from the very outset of the programs that Michael and his colleagues organized have really served as a kind of backdrop and uh, repeated drumbeat for the kind of enterprise that uh, PCORI has uh, become and is uh, in the process, I think it's fair to say, of still becoming. Uh, PCORI is one of the most potent, least appreciated, and I think most significant long-term consequences of reforms in recent years that we all have witnessed in our healthcare system. And I believe it's uh, going to be such an exciting and important uh, opportunity for all of us who are here, all who are participating in this and in the subsequent workshop, to be thinking together about the relationship of uh, research and practice. And particularly from the very outset in the concept of a learning healthcare system, how the two actually are uh, brought together. My own personal aspiration is that over time, the ideas of medical practice and the domains of medical research, particularly not only health services research, will come increasingly to be seen as not separate, parallel, independent enterprises, but rather as tightly integrated, inseparable, and necessarily joined enterprises. And that is a way in which we can reduce the traditional distinctions between research that shows what could work and research which demonstrates what does work in practice. If we can bring those more tightly together over time, I believe we have the opportunity to make not only faster progress, but to make the kind of progress in healthcare that really pays dividends immediately and over the long term for the health consequences of our population. If we're able to manage a system of organization that not only looks at methodology, but also at data systems, that has a concept that incorporates the patients as well as the practitioners, that takes advantage of the strongest methods analytically at the same time that we are facing the most important and pressing problems, then we really will have accomplished something exciting, important, and valuable. So uh, it's a pleasure for me to welcome all of you uh, to this uh, gathering. I really look forward to learning the results of what you do. Uh, Michael alluded to the fact that I'm uh, now in uh, the concluding months of my service as president of the Institute of Medicine. The one small hope I harbor is that when I conclude my service, I'll actually be able to take part in the more fun things that we do, like this gathering, and uh, participate more actively uh, as, a, uh, as a member. And I hope you'll all keep that in mind in the coming months uh, after, after the end of June. But for today, I just want to wish you uh, all good results in your discussion. And really, a lot, a lot depends on the success that those of us here and those of us like-minded will accomplish to bring research and practice into closer alignment and integration. So thank you all for participating and congratulations again to you, Joe and Eric, for getting this launched in this way. Thank you all very much.
Thank you very much, Harvey. Uh, let me build on uh, Harvey's note of welcome and underscore uh, our gratitude to each of you for being here. This is an incredible gathering. Uh, many of you know each other, uh, and uh, those of you who don't know others in the room, uh, I can see from the attendee list uh, what a, a sterling uh, resource base we have here to engage in this uh, important set of discussions. This is an ideal set of discussions, really, for the National Academy of Sciences. Uh, our fundamental obligation, uh, our role in society, is to steward the advancement of science. Uh, and here we're talking about stewarding the continuous generation of new knowledge uh, through the practice process. Uh, and this group of people uh, is absolutely essential uh, to uh, building uh, that stewardship. As Harvey, as Harvey mentioned, uh, we have for the last several years devoted ourselves in the Institute of Medicine to the notion of working with you to build a continuous learning health system. Uh, in many ways, we're uh, taking a page uh, from uh, the entire uh, continuous improvement effort of the last generation uh, through uh, processes focused on product manufacturing, like in automobiles, uh, business processes like uh, GE Six Sigma work, uh, logistics management like the just-in-time uh, delivery processes. Um, we're starting from behind, from way behind. Uh, in that respect, uh, but our aim uh, is to uh, surpass uh, what's been accomplished in those arenas, uh, to surpass uh, both in philosophy, uh, in which we seek a continuous learning uh, process uh, that draws from every element that's involved in the entire system, and in that respect, to surpass it in scope. Uh, because not just um, uh, is the uh, delivery system involved in that learning, but as Harvey said, the customer is involved. Every customer is involved in that learning and continuous improvement process. So our ambitions are much greater, uh, and these are things that will happen. Uh, the question is the pace at which they'll happen, uh, and that's uh, the charge uh, of this uh, meeting today. Uh, the pace depends on our uh, ability to effectively uh, set in motion that virtuous cycle uh, of, uh, uh, that continuously, uh, that represents uh, the, the loop of uh, continuity between research and practice and practice and research. Uh, and in effect, this meeting is where we, uh, as a nation, and I don't think that's too bold a term, this meeting is where we as a nation start to get real about uh, how we can quicken the pace uh, uh, for that progress. It's the first of two meetings. Um, this meeting has you folks who represent uh, the C-suites of health systems around the country, uh, those who are uh, involved in the business uh, practices, in the, uh, in the clinical delivery practices, in the research practices, in the technology practices uh, of your health uh, systems uh, who are making the decisions on the front line that will uh, chart the course uh, to a continuous learning health system and will follow in June uh, with uh, a meeting of uh, the CEOs of the various uh, systems uh, taking the lessons that are captured, uh, the issues that are captured, uh, the priorities that are captured in these discussions over the next two days uh, and looking to the strategies forward. Um, as is the tradition in National Academies meetings, uh, this was, uh, well, it's not a, just a tradition, it's a requirement. Uh, this uh, meeting was uh, planned by a wonderful planning committee uh, that was assembled uh, from uh, around the nation. It was chaired by Eric Larson, uh, as uh, Harvey mentioned. I'm going to read off the list of the planning committee members. Uh, and those of you who are here, if you could just wave your hand so others uh, uh, see you. Ray Baxter uh, from Kaiser Permanente, uh, Barbara Beer from uh, Brigham and, Williams, uh, Brigham and, and uh, Women's Hospital, uh, Mary Brainerd from Health Partners, uh, Megan Gerges uh, from the American Heart Association, uh, Regina 
Holiday, from, uh, who's an uh, artist and uh, patient uh, data ad activist. Uh, Brent James, Intermountain Healthcare. Uh, Umu Karagal uh, from uh, Cincinnati uh, Children's. David Labby uh, from HealthShare of Oregon. Jonathan Perlin is not here today, I know. Lou Sandy uh, from United Health Group. Uh, Joe Selby, of course, uh, has been introduced. Uh, Jonathan Tobin, uh, Clinical Directors Network and John White uh, from uh, ARC. Let's have a round of applause for the planning committee. Our partner and sponsor uh, in this effort and uh, the driver uh, in many ways of this reality test uh, uh, is the leader of uh, the national and in many respects international effort uh, to grow the capacity and productivity of patient-centered uh, uh, outcomes research. Uh, it's Joe Selby, uh, who uh, has uh, for the last uh, three years uh, uh, directed uh, uh, this wonderful new enterprise uh, uh, that is charged with uh, developing a continuous learning health system uh, throughout the nation. Uh, he has, as I mentioned, been a fabulous partner and leader and thank you, Joe, for, for this work uh, and uh, for coming up with the, uh, uh, the uh, creativity uh, and uh, the resources, of course, uh, and giving us the motivation to have this session. Joe?